Hi everyone! So this lesson is going to go over data types, conditionals, and the input function in Python. So in the previous activity we learned that you can assign values to variables of different types. So you've learned that you can evaluate expressions and define functions that return certain values. So for example, I just have um, the terminal open here. So this is REPLIT, but um, I'm not showing you the, the code editor section because that would be where the functions go. Um, so this is just the terminal. And in the terminal, I'm just going to do some really quick calculations. So if I did a is equal to 3, then that means that a is going to be stored with the value of 3 until I change it. Um, and then if I, I could do a bunch of math with that, so I could do like a times 2 and get 6, or a and then star star, that would be to the, to the certain power, so a to the second power, I can do 9, and stuff like that. Okay, so I know that A is stored. However, there's a different type of equals operator, and that is the double equal operator. So if I did A equals equals, then that would return false. This is an example of a Boolean expression. So a Boolean expression you've seen before in Scratch. It's just the what goes inside of an if block. Um, and it's also known as a conditional. So a Boolean expression can either be true or false, and then a result will happen based on that Boolean. So equals equals is one way to check if something is equal to something else. So double equals checks if it's equal. Single equals assigns the value. So now if I did something like a equals 2, now a has the value of 2. So it doesn't have the value of 3 anymore. So then if I did a equals equals 2, then it would be true because I, I took the value of a, which was originally 3, and I changed it to 2. Okay, let's change a back to 3 now. Now, if you're not sure what A is, you can always just type A, and it'll tell you what it is. Okay, um, so there are a bunch of other operators besides just double equals. And so there are other Boolean operators. For example, if you did greater than or equal to, then you could use the greater than sign and then the equal to sign. So if I did something like A is greater than or equal to, four. That would return false because a is not greater than or equal to four. You can do the same thing for less than or equal to. Then there's also an exclamation point and that exclamation point stands for not equal to. So if you did exclamation point equals, you would get is a not equal to something. So if I said a exclamation point equal to three, then that would return false because a is 3. So you can also do compound conditionals, meaning that you can have an and or an or in between the two conditionals or the two conditions. Um, so let me clear this, sorry, um, and let's reset a back to 3. And now, in order to check, well, okay, is a plus 1, is that greater than or equal to 2? And is a to the second power not equal to 5? Then this will return true because a squared is not 5 and a plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2. So this word and here tells you that both things have to be true in order for for it to return true. Now, if I just write this again, instead of and, I put or. And this would also return true. And that's because for or, only one of them has to be true. If at least one is true, then it's gonna be true. Now, say I did or, and I did a squared is not equal to nine, right? 
That would return true because the first part is false is true, but the second part is false, but that doesn't matter because with or you only need one or the other or both to be true. Um, so it's not as specific as and. So if I had done and here, So is a plus one greater than or equal to two? And is a squared not equal to nine? This would be false because both of these would have to be true in order for this whole Boolean expression to be true. You can also use the word not. So like just typing out N-O-T um, in Python would allow you to take the negative of whatever it is. So if I did, If I just put a not here, right in front of this entire Boolean. So if this is this and not a not equal to nine, then that would return true because I made this one, which was originally false, true. Um, so pretty much if you do like not false, then that returns true because it just takes the negative of whatever it is. Okay, so there's another operator called the in operator. So the in operator is a Boolean exp expression just like um, the double equals would be, except that the in checks if a certain value is in some other thing. So it's inside of an iterable. An iterable is something that you can run through. And we'll talk a lot more about iterals, iterables later on, but for now, we're just going to use it to check if a certain string is within another string. So if I did like, uh, let's set B equal to hello. And then I did B in hello world. And that would return true because hello is within hello world. Okay, now you could also use just literal strings. So you can say is O in, is O in B. And that would be true because O is in the value of B, which is hello. Um, you can also say not in. So you could say B not in a uh, hello world. And then that should return false because B is in hello world. So B is not not in hello world. Um, yeah. So now let's talk about data types in Python. So we use the type function in order to determine what type of data a certain variable is. So for example, if I did type and then B, B is a variable, then it tells me it's of class str. So that means it's a string. Now, if I went back and redeclared A as three, right? And then I did type A, A would be of type integer. So these are the four native types of variables in, in sorry, in Python, int, float, Boolean and string. String is characters. Boolean is true or false. Float is any real number, so it can be um, any decimal value. And integers are, well, integers. Okay, so now let's go into the code editor and actually make a function using some Boolean. Um, so here I'm going to say def, let's see, check number. Um, and this is going to take one parameter. It's going to take um, an integer value. And then inside this function, I am going to check certain Boolean values. So in order to check a Boolean value, you're going to use an if statement. So I can say something like if 
and then right after the if, then you can just type whatever you want to type. So if I say, let's check to see if x is less than um, 100. You can say, if x is less than 100, then you're going to put a colon after that. You have if x less than 100, colon. Then you hit enter. Notice that it auto indents for you. And that's because everything after the if, if you want what's ha what happens here as the result, it needs to be indented. So I can say if x is less than 100, let's print, um, wow. I don't know. Um, and then we can also do an else if. So just like in Scratch, you can also do an else if um, in Scratch. An else if in Python uses the, the word L if. So L if allows you to check, okay, if x is less than 100, I say print well. Else if, let's check, is x is less than 200. Then I can print. Ah. Um, and then let's also do an else. Now you can have a whole bunch of L ifs, right? So you can have else if this, else if this, else if this, but let's just do one else. Now the else code does not need any Boolean after it. So it's just else and then colon. And then after that, we can just say print, um, Number is too large. Something like that. Okay, now I need to compile this. So run it. And then I'm going to call the function that I was yelling at. Okay. Um, so check number. And let's try checking 150. So this should give us ah that prints, and that's because x is not less than 100 but it is less than 200 okay now let's try 200 still gonna so here it's gonna say okay if it's not less than 200 if it is 200 it's gonna go to that else and that's gonna say number is too large okay now you can do like negative values here too, like negative 200 and that's gonna say wow because i'm not checking if it's negative or not Okay, another thing that you can do for a function is you can check. So let's do like check word. And let's take a word as um, variable, so the argument or parameter. Um, and then I want to use another if statement. So let's say if um, the letter A is in word. And I want to print A is in the word. Let's just do a regular else here and say print A is not in the word. Okay. Now I want to run this again. I can call this function check word. Word must be a string. So let's just mash a bunch of keys down. And it's going to print A is in the word, and that's because it is the word, but it's in it, whatever that is. So a function that asks a question. So we're going to talk a little bit about the input function now. So the input function in Python allows you to ask for user input. And it takes one argument or parameter, and that is what you want to say to the user. So if I want to say, give me a number between 1 and 10, then whatever the user types is going to be stored in A. So for example, if I did um, x equals input 
Give me a number. And what's going to happen is this is going to print for me. And then if I type the number, so if I type four, right? Now, if I if, you're, if I look and try and find what X is, so if I did print X, it would print four. Um, and that's because I gave it the value of four when I used this input function. So next time in class, we're gonna be talking a lot more about the input function. But for now, just know that this is how you get user input and we'll talk a little bit more about it in class.